Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, uh, if you guys remember on my, once again, the EGR um, delete video, um, I said I was going to install some gauges. Well, I did, maybe about a month ago. Now, it's been so damn cold here in uh, southern Ohio that uh, the night that I did it, I was in the garage and had the, the old diesel heater running. That thing's really loud, so... Uh, you, I, you wouldn't have been able to hear me if I would uh, do video. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to cover the steps that I did to uh, do this install the best I can. And if you guys uh, have any questions or anything, uh, you know what to do. So, Well, uh, here are the gauges I put in. It's a uh, boost pressure gauge. It's up to 35 foot-pounds, or 35 pounds, I should say. And uh, of course my EGT uh, gauge goes up 1600. Of course I don't think this thing will ever uh, get that hot, but that's just what was available. Uh, and of course with the dual uh, steering wheel pod. And um, lights up blue there. It matches the dash, so I was happy with that. Anyways, um, pretty simple uh, install here. Uh, I guess we'll start out with the um, the pyrometer gauge here. Um, now it might be hard to see, but I got my ground from underneath. I'll show you. Let me get a light here. I got the uh, the light or the I got the ground here from underneath the steering wheel column. Uh, there's a plate that where the uh, there's little nuts that are uh, attached to where the steering wheel column is underneath here. I got this uh, this plastic uh, cover underneath it so you can't really see it. Well, I think you can see one of them. Right there, is that it? Yeah, one of those right there. That's where I got my grounds from, from these uh, for these gauges. So, yeah, there's a metal plate underneath there. Uh, and it was pretty much the perfect spot to get my ground. So, for both these gauges, that's where I got the ground. So, if you have a Jetta, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you get underneath there. Now, as far as where I got the power, I'll grab my little key here. I tapped into the uh, fuse box. Fuse panel, I should say. And I went to O'Reilly's and I got one of these uh, fuse taps here. And uh, piggybacked onto uh, this fuse, which is the uh, for the inst instrument cluster, of course. Um, you know, the the one the one uh they're five amps by the way the uh, one fuse is for again for the instrument cluster and the other one is for the gauge itself so that's why there's two there uh one of these fuse taps uh, i think it was around like six or seven bucks at uh riley's uh, you can pretty much get them anywhere and of course i marked it or with the supplied tag there so i knew it was for the uh, pyrometer so Real nice and clean. So that and the where I got the power at, uh, as far as the light, you know, the, this light for my um, the blue light, I had to find the um, the hot wire that was, of course, hot whenever I uh, had it turned on, you know, the instrument cluster, and not hot whenever it's off. So. Now I had to look this up online, but here's the trick how to get back here. First of all, you push it in, okay, like that, and then you twist it to the right, and it slides right out, just like that. So, I don't want to pull this out all the way too much, but uh, I uh, tapped into the wires. Uh, I think it was the purple wire. You just have to use a, uh, a test lamp and uh, find which one's hot whenever it's on, and not when it's not so 
that's where I uh, tapped into those for the blue lights. Now as far as the boost pressure gauge, um, again I got the ground from underneath there, like I showed you earlier. And now how I got to route it so cleanly to where you can't see any wires is uh, the uh, when I put the pot on, it was actually kind of tricky because I never uh, put gauges on one of these cars before, but I had to drop it all the way down, you know, press this underneath and drop the whole steering wheel down. And what I didn't know was you pull forward toward the driver, toward yourself, and it'll slide right in. So, yeah, I fiddled around with it for a little while before I realized that I could uh, pull it toward me like that so that pod just slid right in and there's plenty of room I don't know if you can see that but more than enough room to route some wires in there got a lot of room in there so had a real nice clean uh, install I was real happy with it because last thing I wanted was a bunch of uh, bunch of wires showing where steering column was Okay, now as far as the boost gauge, I'm going to show you how I uh, went ahead and did that. Now, now uh, it said in the directions that if there wasn't already uh, a hole in the firewall to uh, drill one. So that's the last thing I wanted to do. So I got to looking around and I once again got lucky. There was already a grommet in the firewall here thank god thanks Volkswagen right there can you see it see so that's where my pyrometer pyrometer probe or the, the line for the pyrometer that steel braided one and you can see the vinyl uh, boost cage um, line right there yeah that that was already there there was that uh, there was that rubber grommet you see right there and um, all I had to do was, you know, poke a hole th through it with a knife or whatever tool and run those lines in there. So that, that wound up working out and taking a lot of lot of work off of me. So I routed them as straight as possible with no bends or kinks or anything like that. Routed them straight here and to right here where the uh, race pipe is. Now the race pipe, when I bought it, was already tapped uh, for a, a boost gauge so that once again that wound up working out too uh, less work I had to do uh, this is a compression fitting uh, same thing for the back of the uh, boost gauge itself it was uh, compression fitting on the back of it um, yeah and I just to my knowledge as of a couple weeks ago the Diesel Geek no longer sells these EGR kits and I was kind of sad to hear that but uh I guess that uh, people are going to start making their own kits now but uh but anyways uh, if, you, if you guys watch the uh, EGR delete kit uh, video here's where the pyrometer probe enters um, that's the exhaust manifold as you can you can see right there and that's the block off plate that come with the kit the uh, would be the inlet of the EGR cooler used to be where that block off plate is and uh, since I took it out, you know, the, that uh, the block off plate's used. And I had to drill and tap a hole there right there in the middle and put this fitting. That fitting right there was uh, in the kit for my pyrometer. Um, so I had to drill and tap a hole in that, in that block off plate to, for that to go right into the middle of that. But uh, from what I read online, that's probably the best uh, location to put it as far as uh, accuracy goes. And plus, it uh, worked out too because I didn't have to wind up drilling into the exhaust manifold itself and worrying about chips getting in my turbo and stuff. So, once again, less work I had to do, which is always great. So, real simple, really. Uh, Took me about five hours with taking breaks and stuff because it was hellaciously cold out that night.
But uh, but yeah, that's that's all there was to it, guys. And uh, you know, like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, do in the comment section or send me a private message. Uh, give me a like, uh, subscribe to me, and uh, till next time. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.